everyone. This is the Zaleski Sports Show. I'm your host, Rachel Zaleski. Today's show, we're going to be talking about the NFL and their regular season starting this week. The Milwaukee Brewers, college and high school football, and the Marshfield Tigers soccer. We're now joined by Jason Zaleski, our sports expert. Jason, the first NFL season game opener is going mm -hmm. to be this week. It's going to be Thursday at 7.30 p.m., the Patriots versus the Chiefs. So, are you excited? Yeah, let's get it on, man. We're ready for football. We've been waiting for this since, uh, since Super Bowl Sunday last February. Uh, it's an exciting time. I put on my uh, NFL jersey, and, and Rachel, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's get pumped up. It's football time. Woo! Yeah. All right, so they, <laughs> I just thought you were going to say some more about that football time because you're yeah, so excited. All right. Well, good. Well, let's, let's Is there just, anything else you have to yeah, say about football? Well, uh, there's a lot. It's a 20-minute show, so I'll keep it just to 19 minutes for this. Um, the uh, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> first home game you mentioned, Rachel, is September 7th. That's Thursday night at 730. Uh, and that's the Patriots. They are at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I've learned over the last uh, decade or so uh, to never bet against the Patriots. Either they will win or will their way to victory, or they will cheat their way to victory. So either way, it's going to happen. Uh, so take the Patriots at, at home against the Chiefs. Uh, a couple other notes. Uh, let's just talk about some games of the week. Packers and Seahawks. That's, uh, uh, I would say, a premier matchup. Uh, some teams that have been in the playoffs uh, for uh, in recent history, uh, they've been in the playoffs a lot. Uh, Sunday night football is always the game of the week, and that's the Giants at the Cowboys. In Monday night football, there's two games for opening week. Uh, so we start with Saints at Minnesota, and then the Chargers visit the Denver Broncos. Uh, one quick game note, uh, the game down in Miami has been postponed. Uh, that's the Buccaneers at the Dolphins. Uh, Hurricane Irma is on her way towards Florida, and uh, with, that, with her putting that... Uh, threat uh, against the, the Florida and the Florida Keys. Uh, that game has been postponed. That'll be played during their bye week later in the year. I believe that's week 11. We'll put an update on that, though. Uh, but that game has been postponed. So if you're looking for Bucks Dolphins, uh, you'll have to wait just one more week. Uh, but the other games, like I said, games of the week, uh, Patriots at home against the Chiefs, Packers, Seahawks, Giants, Cowboys, Saints, Vikings, Chargers, Broncos, and the rest of the NFL is here, and we are ready to go. Well, thoughts and prayers out to all of those people down in Florida. I hope they all yeah. take cover and they leave if they have to. So I'm yeah. um, grateful that the NFL is postponing that. Yeah. So, Jason, go ahead and bring us a little bit of an update on how the Milwaukee Brewers are doing. Uh, they are not doing. So uh, bad news for the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, they had a nice weekend uh, last week. looked like maybe they were going to start to get some traction. Uh, they went over to Cincinnati a couple days ago for a three-game series against the last-place Reds and lost every single stinking game in Cincinnati. Uh, bad news going on there. Lost 7-1. to one. Uh, That game was just final just a few minutes ago. Uh, they are now in third place behind the Cardinals. There are five losses behind the Cubs. There are four losses behind the Rockies and uh, perhaps even a, a loss behind the Cardinals now in wild-card standing. Uh, they are, are just slipping. Uh, Matt Garza didn't even make it through the third inning today. Uh, some interesting stats, Rachel, with, uh, with Garza. I would be very surprised if he pitches again as a Milwaukee Brewer, and here's why. His last six starts, 24 innings pitched. He's given up 20, I'm sorry, he's given up 37 hits, 27 runs. He's only struck out 17, and he's got an over 10 ERA. Uh, so he was bad again today, uh, gave up five runs before they took him out. Uh, loaded the bases uh, right away in the third inning, uh, walked in a run. Uh, bad news there. Uh, Brewers uh, have, I think, too tough of a hill to climb now. If you remember, Rachel, last week we talked about the Brewers having the Cubs seven games to, in the month of September as they finish up the season, which is a way to catch the Cubs. And as we called out later in that show last week, they also have to beat the other teams to have a chance for that series to even matter, for those seven games to count. And right now, the way the Brewers are playing, losing three getting swept to the last place Reds, uh, forget about it. We may not talk about the Brewers again this year. Sounds like an uphill battle for sure. Yeah. So the uh, Zaleski Sports Show this past Saturday was in Stevens Point to watch the UW Pointers take on and defeat the Green Knights. Mm -hmm. It was 34-33 to 33 in double overtime. And here, let's just go ahead and watch what happened. All right, guys, Zaleski Sports Show reporting from Gerke Stadium in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, as we're getting ready to watch the Stevens Point Pointers take on St. Norbert College Green Knights 
It is a rainy afternoon here in Stevens Point. We're actually delayed by about an hour and a half due to lightning. Uh, the ball is slippery on the field, so we'll keep a close eye on that today. We are brought to you by Ho-Chunk Gaming in Nakusa. Ho-Chunk Gaming, located just south of Nakusa on Highway G. Ho-Chunk Gaming, experience the difference. It's the Lesky Sports Show. We are here with Coach Tom Janelle. Uh, Coach finished up a thrilling double overtime victory. Talk about uh, getting a win first game of the year. Yeah, it was by design. We want to keep the stands uh, full and uh, we want to make sure that everybody was, you know, it's like it's an exciting brand of football. And so why, why uh, beat a team by 40 points when you can have stands full and have it come down to double overtime and team winning an uh, extra point like that? But really, really proud of the guys. A lot of diversity with the, day, with the weather. You know, a lot of penalties, a lot of mistakes in the red zone, but uh, we made a final way, and a uh, good team found a way to win. We did that today. Uh, all right, coach. We talked with uh, with Jerry Williams a little bit after the game, and uh, just the kind of spark he gives to the team. That you talked about versatility. Fourth quarter, 12-21, uh, down seven, uh, marched down the field and got to a fourth and five. Uh, there was Jerry Williams down the sideline for a 30-yard pass. Uh, just talk about uh, Jerry and his uh, meaning, uh, yeah, what he means to the team. Uh, he just, uh, you know, he's 12-time All-American in track, so he's one of the most dynamic athletes in Division Three. Uh, totally, whether it's, it's uh, track and field or, or football or basketball, he's, he's a special guy. And so, uh, I'd love to see him be an All-American in football in his senior year. But uh, anytime he gets the ball in his hands, I mean, he doesn't look like he's running that fast, but he uh, he has blazing speed. He's a fourth year kid. And, you know, he's coming into his own right now. And so, Contributed in the past, and we, he, he really did have a good job today. And, and we need that you know, big chunk of play, um, and dynamic type of plays uh, you know, in, in games. You need to have explosives. And, you know, Coach, in the fourth quarter, uh, about four minutes left, driving down the field again. Uh, Steve Harrah hauled in a, a nice pass. Uh, it looked like a face mask. Game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you never blame the officials. You know, they, they see it as they call it. And, uh, Second half, Coach Swigert, 11 for 15 wow. in, in the second half of regulation. Wow. Uh, and then more importantly, two for hey, two in overtime. Two, three, touchdowns. two one play drives in overtime. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen that before. You know? yeah. and so it's like usually you grind it out, grind it out, grind it out. And Coach Blacko did a heck of a job calling some uh, two you know, really creative plays that you know, we, we called them two plays. It's just one play drive, one play drive. I don't know Cool. All right, Coach. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, Zelensky Sports Show as we wrap things up here in Stevens Point at Gerke Field. Pointers come out with a win today, week one, and uh, we're on to the rest of the season. Coach, best of luck, and thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Keep stacking. So we're here with Zelensky Highlight House, player of the game, Jerry Williams. Jerry, talk about what it's like to uh, get the season started with a win. Yeah, it's fun. Three straight weeks is hard, and like, we finally got a win, so it feels good. That was yeah. really good. Yeah, talk, talk about your versatility, right? When the team needs you, uh, you seem to be there, right? We need a kickoff, we need a spark, and you're running extra. We need a big catch in fourth down, you got it. Uh, what? Just talk about that. What? What? Uh, your reliance on the team and how the team relies on you. I, I just want to help the team any way I can. So, like, if they call me, I'll do my best to provide whatever they need. That was our sports expert, Jason Zaleski. Thank you for watching the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. Sponsored by Ho-Chunk Gaming in Nakusa. Ho-Chunk Gaming just south from Nakusa on Highway G. Ho-Chunk Gaming, experience the difference. I'm in the house. Yeah. All right, folks, good news. We've got a whole slate of WEAC games that we'll be covering this year, 10 in total. There's one down, nine to go. We're going to have a great time covering those games. You can see our full schedule at our website, ZaleskiSportsShow.com. Rachel? Great. So now, going into our Sports 101 question, this week's Sports 101 is going to be, what does cut day mean in the NFL? Uh, well, so cut day, it means curtains. Uh, for certain players uh, on, the, on those teams. So here's how it all begins, folks. At the start of the NFL season, the, uh, the 32 assorted teams will compile a 90-man roster. So I'll start with 90 players. Uh, for week one, which we're in right now, roster max is 53. 
So what happens, and you do the math, I'll help you with it, right? 37 players get cut, and that all happened just last week on, uh, on Tuesday, uh, a week and a day ago. Uh, those rosters were trimmed by 37 on each team. There's 32 teams, 1,184 players lost their jobs last week. Uh, so to the unemployment line with them. Oh. Fortunately, though, some of them are still good enough where they will get picked up by other teams. So, for example, uh, Rachel, you might get cut because the team that you're on right now, just you don't have a fit there. Yet six other teams may, may need your services. So sometimes it's an upgrade uh, and a player just is in a situation where that depth chart is just a little too deep. So you'll still have a chance with other teams. Uh, but all of a sudden, and this was the first year that happened uh, in years past, the NFL has, uh, has had more of a gradual system, uh, 15 players this week, 10 the next week, so on and so forth. Uh, this year, though, all at once, 1,184 looking for jobs. So, uh, and, and the rosters are set, and uh, we're ready for football. That's what cut day means, though. Well, thanks for explaining that. Yeah. I've always heard that as being like a doomsday type of thing, oh, and yeah. that's a shame. <laughs> so um, a lot of uh, unemployment there for those guys. Did they like an un unemployment check? I don't really well, know I suppose they, they could qualify for that uh, through their employer. I think many of them, though, will have other opportunities. Uh, again, whether they get picked up by another team in the NFL, sure. maybe in the Canadian League, maybe Arena League, uh, somewhere else, or uh, perhaps they'll go sell insurance somewhere. There you go, mm -hmm. insurance salesman. Mm -hmm. Moving on to local sports. The Marshfield Tigers soccer team went up against the Wisconsin Rapids, went up against Wisconsin Rapids yesterday, and here's what we saw. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House, sponsored by Marshfield Insurance. Marshfield Insurance, proactively monitoring your insurance, making your future more predictable. Let's send it down to Jason for post-game thoughts with Tigers head coach, Steve McCann. All right, thanks, Rachel. We are here visiting with uh, Marshall Tiger head coach Steve McCann. Uh, coach, uh, disappointing 7-0 uh, loss today. Uh, down three within the first eight minutes. Uh, where do you go from there? Well, we we had a little hole be behind our mids, and the, the defenders uh, they were number outnumber us a little bit up um, by our defense. Uh, we needed guys to step, but there, there was just too many guys back there. So we, we actually ended up changing our formation. Um, it was a little bit later than that, but we, we threw a kind of a, a, a stopper in um, in front of our defense to, to get that middle position. They were playing some nice one-twos off of that position. They'd have a target come up and play a one-two off of that position. They made some nice plays uh, for sure. So they're a good attacking offensive team for sure. All right, Coach, and uh, like I said, down uh, down three within eight minutes. Looked like the offense really started to get a little uh, a little itchy to get the ball upfield. Um, you know, kind of a lot of quick turns and kicks. Uh, was that just more the defense backed up, or were, were guys trying to, to catch up all at once? Well, we were playing a four-three-three, so we did have guys up the field. So we you know we had the opportunity to get the ball, and when we actually possessed and had the ball, I thought we looked good at times. They just had those quick turnarounds, get the ball in there, just beat our mids, and. and quick one too and, and yeah they were, they were pretty deadly uh, I don't know what, how many shots they had on early but I think they scored on pretty much every one of them early so um, they started off pretty hot. All right now uh, Matt Paul out of goal, uh, goal uh, due to injury uh, Grant Urban in I, I thought he played pretty well coach uh, seven that'll go on his sheet uh, how much of that's on the defense though? Uh, probably about seven. Okay. <laughs> right. I thought Grant did great in that he made some you know he when he grabbed the ball he had it and he uh, you know came out good he I thought he did great today, so um, yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, and, and a positive there, uh, especially with Grant on the penalty kick, uh, looked like he had that uh, seen, seen through all the way. Yeah, he made a nice save on that one for sure, so it was nice to stop that. We wanted to, you know, we tried to win the second half, so we only lost 2 nothing in the second half. We really wanted to score. They haven't been scored on in conference yet. They're uh, unscored on shutout, so we thought we'd be the first. And we had a couple good chances. So. All right, Coach, uh, 48 hours now between now and Merrill. That's Thursday at 7 p.m. What to work on in, the, in that short time frame? Um, playing a little bit faster yet, and just um, I think we marked better than we did uh, in our last game against Stevens Point. So we got to mark up a little tighter, step to the ball, pressure the ball a little harder. So we're going to step harder, move it faster, and we'll be good. All right, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us. So Rachel, back to you. That was our sports expert, Jason Zaleski. Thank you to our sponsor, Marshfield Insurance. Marshfield Insurance, proactively monitoring your insurance, making your future more predictable. This is the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. Visit our Facebook page at Zaleski Sports Show each week to see our featured game of the week. The Zaleski Sports Show game of the week this week is going to be the Marshfield Tigers at home versus Kokana at 7 p.m. Last week, the Marshfield Tigers played against Hortonville, 
and they lost. So let's see if they can bounce back against the Galloping Ghosts. We'll be reporting live from Beale Stadium, so tune in to Focus on Marshfield and see the live stream. The, Marsh, the Stratford Tigers defeated Chiguamagan last Friday 70-6. to We'll see if Tomahawk proves to be a tougher test as they take on the Hatchets at home Friday at 7 p.m. Spencer Columbus lost to Stanley Boyd last Friday 29-14. The Rockets should have a better chance on Friday as they line up against Nielsville Granton. Game time is 7 p.m. This has been the Zaleski Sports Show. Follow us on Facebook at Zaleski Sports Show. Also on Twitter at Zaleski Sports. I'm Rachel. This is Jason. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys all have a great rest of your week. Yeah, normally I say go sports, but forget it. It's football time, guys. Get ready for football. Let's go. We got football action coming all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> He's so crazy.